This is part three on a series on Android intents and public APIs. And today we're gonna to make your phone talk. Today we're gonna to go over a text-to-speech example. It's provided by Android and it's really simple, so I'm going to skip the implementation. The whole point of this series is talking about public APIs so that me as the developer who's trying to get something done doesn't have to think about how to actually implement it. If I can just fire off an intent at another app and let that other app handle it, that's cool. Of course, you can go to my blog and check out all the code and there are links to Android documentation and code samples on GitHub. First, we're gonna talk about the provider side for this text-to-speech example. The very first thing that you're gonna to need to do is we're going to want a broadcast receiver that has an intent filter that implements some action that you'd like to specify. So for this one, it's gonna be like io.ejf.intentsexample.say because I wanna say something. And the package for the main example demo application is io.ejf.intentsexample. In the Android manifest, you just add the definition for your receiver and your intent filter. It's really simple. Next, you're going to add your broadcast receiver class. In your broadcast receiver, all you're going to do is implement onReceive. The reason that we're doing this is because broadcast receivers stop execution immediately at the end of onReceive, and the text-to-speech client on Android is asynchronous and has a callback which means that by the time it calls back, our, our broadcast receiver will have been killed. We fire an intent from the broadcast receiver to the service. The service handles it just like we showed in part one of this video series. It's really simple. All you do is you just handle an intent like normal, you check for the extra, pull out the string, and then pass that off to your text-to-speech client. On the consumer side, this is actually from any other app that you want. You can fire off an intent at the broadcast receiver that we just created. So to do this, it's just a couple lines of code, very similar to what we showed in the broadcast receiver example in part one. Except this time, we're going to add an extra with the string that you'd like it to speak out. Sharing from any app. Sharing can be done from any other app, but they have to implement our specific action. What if we wanted other apps to be able to share to this without needing to implement anything special? We can do that by using the standard action for sharing text. Android provides this, lots of apps implement it, and it's very simple to do. One note here is that you actually have to share to an activity because that's what all these other apps expect. Typically, when you're sharing text on Android, it's sharing to an activity. So other apps are gonna call start activity, and if you're only listening for this in your broadcast receiver, it's not gonna show up. What I did was I just implemented the dummy activity that adds this intent filter to it, and all it does is it just passes the intent off to that same service that we use for the broadcast receiver and then kills the activity. In practice, it actually never shows up on screen. I have a sample app here called the Say Launcher, and this is a separate app from our demo, and it implements the basic action that I talked about that will send text to the broadcast receiver. I've typed in some text, I'm gonna hit the Say button, this is an app that sends an intent. That works. That's cool. But what if we want to share from another app? I'm going to use my company's app because I know we have a share button that this should work for. Hit the share button, share to other, which is just any type of other app. Okay, and here's my common things that show up. And intent example is there. Download talk rate messenger. Great, so that was the whole message. It's pretty short, but you get the idea. So now you can like send anything you want. Whenever possible, it's a good idea to use the popular methods of sharing things in Android because that way anybody can share things to you without needing to integrate specifically with you. Now that's exactly what you want, isn't it? So why would you want to integrate something specific? Your app handles something very specific and you want to have something directly sent to your app. Another example is if you have a very specific workflow around a type of media and you don't want UI showing up and you kind of just want to handle how you're going to handle it, then you might want to implement your own custom public API so that apps can hit that button, send it to you, and it doesn't show up to the user at all. Like there's no dialogue that says which app you want to share to. It just goes off and does it. And sometimes that's exactly what you want. It's a lot faster that way. And if there's a specific workflow that people want to have happen, 
then it makes sense to do it, right? Like, so in this case, I know that like I want to say something out loud. So in my app, I might have a button that says like speak this out loud, right? And I can highlight text just like I showed in Medium and maybe hit that button and have it immediately speak. So that's the sort of thing that we can do with these custom APIs that may be a little bit more cumbersome to do with the popular ways. But the popular ways are good too because they allow any app to share with you, even though they may not integrate directly. Right In conclusion, building public APIs on a phone isn't all that difficult to do. You can do some neat stuff with it, which we showed here today. Hopefully you're starting to get an idea of the types of things that might work well for building these sorts of APIs into your app and why you might want to do that. Next time, I'd like to pick out a couple apps that are already doing this sort of thing and sort of show how they're doing it and maybe why it's a good thing. And then probably do another example. Thanks for watching.